It's the end of June and things are starting to finally look extremely exciting on our acreage garden. Let's go take a tour. Kristen and I am the gardener and the creator behind the gardening blog Shifting Roots. This garden we actually do not live on. This is my mother-in-law's property and she so very kindly allows us to garden here. Um, if you're interested in seeing more about our acreage gardening journey we have a playlist that I will link for you. Also you can check out our place where we actually live in the city in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan and see our backyard cut flower garden over there and here's the latest tour. And as always, if you live in a cold climate with a short growing season, you are definitely going to want to subscribe. Um, every single day I show up on Instagram and Facebook and you can get a behind the scenes look at what's going on, plus a ton of gardening advice and inspiration, especially for those of us in cold climates with short growing seasons. Okay, enough of the preamble. Let's get on with the tour. So first I'm going to take you to what we like to consider kind of the pride and joy of the acreage garden right now, and that is our greenhouse. Let's take a look. We've certainly come a long way from the beginning of the season when we first made the greenhouse. We've got the irrigation system finally figured out and the trellis system. The tomatoes, some of them are starting to be on their second clipping. I don't know if that's really the right word for that, but what I mean is that they have one little band hooking them up to the string and then they have a second little band. And it's so exciting because lots of our tomatoes are starting to flower. I'm probably most excited for the Sakuras. They have, will have these gorgeous chains of tomatoes that will be on them. They're doing really well in the greenhouse. I mean, they are bred for it. And I just cannot wait till we get some tomatoes. Now, unfortunately, you'll see we have some crushed up eggshells here. We've been really struggling with cutworms. Now, I don't know why, but it seems that the cutworms really like our jet star tomatoes. We don't have very many jet stars, but any tomato that's been sacrificed by the cutworm is a jet star. So I don't know if it came in with the nursery or they just like them. If anyone wants to hop in on the comments and see if you have anything to say about that. I'd love to hear it. It's frustrating too because these are the jet stars and these are the ones that we actually have some fruiting tomatoes on. The cucumbers are finally starting to catch and hopefully they'll start climbing up those trellises soon. The peppers struggled for a long time. It was just so windy and they were low to the ground and they were just getting absolutely beat up by the wind. See like this one here. Now it's starting to get some new and healthier growth so I think we're okay, but the peppers had an uphill struggle. Next, let's take a look at sort of the main garden area. This area does not get as much love and attention as the greenhouse does, but it's really starting to perk up and be like something. One thing I'm really glad we did is um, we just kept the tarp on the rest of the garden space and it really was the right decision. Like as much as I would have loved to have a giant garden, after last year in our struggle garden, I really just wanted to have a good garden, even if it was smaller instead of a really big garden that was totally mediocre. The dahlias really seem to like it here. Any of the ones that have a lot of green on them are ones that I started. Anything that's just poking up like this little one or this one here are all ones that I just put straight into the ground, even though they didn't necessarily have anything on them. Over here is the instant flower garden that I had made a video about um, a couple of days ago. Everything is finally starting to take. I had to replant a bunch of Rubecchia over here and some Zinnia. So they're not looking fantastic, but I know they're going to pull through. So my Bells of Ireland is finally starting to do something. Look how cute that is. You can actually see the little bells on them. And even though they're looking a little sad, it's a good sign and they're going to make it. 
A lot of the stuff that was growing at my own mom's garden that I transferred over here was really struggling. Like this amaranth, I think it's finally gonna make it, but it's definitely not happy whatsoever. Same thing with some of the cosmos. Um, the first round that I planted have mostly taken, but then some of these ones that I brought in a little bit later are still looking pretty sad. That one's basically dead, more dead. And then here's the ones over here I have taken. I thought that nothing was coming up in the garden, but what I'm finding, like with this amaranth here, is that I think a lot of my seed got washed away into the pathways when stuff wasn't, um, or when the soil wasn't really soaking the water in. You can really notice it over here where I have a bunch of cruciferous vegetables. I have no idea exactly what they are that somehow made it over here and are surviving in my pathway. The salvia definitely loves it here. So I think next year I'm gonna invest in more salvia cause like do more of what works, right? So pretty and it's really happy. Vegetable section is doing pretty decent. I have this row of pumpkins here that I planted way too close together because I thought a whole bunch of them would die like they did last year. But nicely and thankfully, it looks like they're gonna catch and they're gonna do something. So not sure if I'm gonna move them or I'll just try to train them to go over there where nothing's really growing. Some of this lettuce that I just had extra and plopped in is doing fantastic. Got a lot of pretty lettuce this year. I'll show you over when we get to the raised bed portion. This is my third or fourth year trying to grow decent artichokes. And honestly, I don't know if they're actually gonna take and do something this year but here's hoping. My cruciferous vegetables had a really rough start, but I think they're gonna pull through and I'm hoping I should get something by the end of the year. The celery is definitely living its best life and I hope that I get to harvest some this year. I didn't last year. I'm also super pleased with this fennel. I tried growing some last year that didn't work out, but this stuff is doing great and I will almost definitely get a harvest. The original snaps that I planted have finally um, taken off, I guess, and I'm excited to see them bloom eventually. You can see right here, we're just starting to get the first little bit of one. These tomatoes do not have as glamorous of a life as the tomatoes in the greenhouse do. So they're not quite as far along, but they're still looking pretty decent after a rough start. We've also added in some blueberries, a couple of lilies. These lilies will get moved um, once the blueberries grow a little bit bigger, but I thought, you know, until then, wouldn't it be nice to just have a little bit of flowers in between or waiting for those bushes to branch out? Now, if you consider the greenhouse is Michael's pride and joy, then the raised beds are definitely my pride and joy. Let's take a look. We finally got some landscape fabric over these raised beds, so we just don't have to keep weeding that area around them. We really wanna try and make less work for ourselves as much as possible. Everything is really happy in these raised beds. My pumpkins are finally gonna start up the vine pretty soon. The tomatoes are really strong and this colorful lettuce garden or greens garden is my absolute pride and joy. I've wanted something like this for probably two, three years and I kept trying to make it happen. And for whatever reason, it just never seemed to work out. But finally, this was my year. I also really struggle with Swiss chard and I finally have my rainbow row of Swiss chard. I love the bright lights variety. I also have a couple of different cabbages that I started from seed and I moved my Brussels sprouts over. They were in a different part of the yard, but they were just getting neglected and forgotten and they're still in pretty rough shape, but I think they'll pull through. Then these back beds are a little bit simpler. We just have some beans in here and then onions and a little bit of garlic in this one. Finally, I'm gonna take you over to something really exciting that we're just starting. So it doesn't look like much right now, but this is the start of a bit of an orchard that we're planning. 
we're really blessed that this property already has some fruit trees on it. There's choke cherry, there's Saskatoon berry, there's tons of raspberries. And so we have just added some cherry trees, hascaps, blueberries, oh, gooseberries came with the place. And the one big tree you saw was an apricot tree. We still have to get another apricot tree. We have two plums coming and we also have a couple of apples. And these are full size apples, they're not crab apples. There's also crab apples in a different spot on the property. Thanks so much for joining me on this quick little tour. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're also in a cold climate with the shark growing season, make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell. Also, I show up every single day on Facebook and Instagram where you can see exactly what I'm doing in real time. All right, friends, we'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.